Hey everyone, welcome back. So today's video is going to be a little different than usual because rather than looking at games or gaming products themselves, we're going to be looking at some collectibles that I have around the studio that are related to gaming. More specifically for today, we're going to be focusing on my pop collection, which I just decided to start collecting a little more seriously. It's also a collection that's going to be focusing mainly on pops related to gaming. However, there are a few exceptions of TVs and movies that I've decided to collect here and there. And just so none of you are worried, this isn't going to be replacing any of the regular gaming content. This will be really done as an extra video series on top of my regular gaming content. And if you're wondering what brought this on, well, primarily I wanted a video series where I could be a little more laid back than doing, you know, hardcore serious reviews about games or video game products. So I wanted something a little more laid back and collecting pops. I mean, we're all going to disagree on which we prefer one over another, but I thought sharing you my opinion with all the new pops I would get in would still be something interesting. Also, as a side note, just know that I'm not sponsored in any way for this video. I will be referring to the fact that I took a membership to Pop in a Box, which is a service that delivers you monthly pops based on interests that you have. So you sort of select a category, you can blacklist and whitelist some pops, and they deliver you two at random every month or more. I took a membership for just two pops because, like I said, I'm just getting my collection started and I didn't want to go too overboard to begin with. But I'm not sponsored in any way, shape, or form by them, so I'll just be referring to it as a service that so far I find fun to have, just because, especially if you there's so many pops out there that sometimes selecting which ones you want to buy exactly can be difficult. I'll still be buying some here and there myself, but I found it fun that every month, randomly, I'll be getting two pops and I don't know which ones I'll be getting ahead of time so we'll be opening them up together and figuring out just how they scale on a scale of 1 to 10 in my opinion. I also don't know yet how long I'll be doing this series for. If you guys really like it please drop a like down below and let me know in the comments so that I know that you actually like this series and want it to come back on a monthly basis and if however the series doesn't catch on and I sort of get fed up of it who knows, I might stop it after a few months, but for the moment, I'm having fun doing this series and I hope all of you will have fun with me as well. So to start with, before we look at the first two new pops I got, I thought it'd be fun to take a quick look at what I have for the moment. Now, like I said, my collection isn't huge, but you should be seeing it on the screen right now. These are the pops that I've kept in box. I actually have more than this that I was collecting, but like I said, I wasn't doing it seriously. So I took them out of the boxes. I didn't keep the boxes, which is why I don't consider them part of my official collection. But I do have a few more than this. But what you see on the screen right now is really what I'm regarding as my current main pop collection. So as you can see, I have all the current Pokemon Pops that are out. I also have one of the Crash Bandicoot Pops and I'm going to strongly try to get all the others that I'm missing. I have some of the 8-bit classic series as well. I have a Dig Dug figurine as well as the two Altered Beast Werewolves. I have both the Gold and Regular Edition for the moment. And I have one totally unrelated to gaming pop, which is the He-Man Slime Edition. I'm just a huge He-Man fan from the 80s, so when I saw this one, especially the Slime, which was a special edition, I had to pick it up at my local EB Games. I couldn't help myself. I also have a couple of vinyl uh, Star Wars packs, but like I said, for today, I'm just focusing on the Pops mostly, and that's the main collection I'm going to be going for. I'm not really going to be diving into the vinyls. The only reason I have these are because they were on sale for the both packs for $2 each once again at EB Games, so it was one of those things I just couldn't pass up. So now, without further ado, we're going to get started on the new pops I got. So the first one we're going to take a look at is the Triceraops pop from Fortnite. Now, we're going to start with a quick close-up.
So I have to say, although I'm not really crazy about Fortnite, the Tricera Ops Pop looks really, really nice. I mean, the colors, the aesthetic, and all the little details, especially the little dinosaur in the backpack, are really nice touches on this uh, Fortnite Pop. And honestly, uh, even though I wouldn't have maybe selected it myself, I'm sort of glad I got it randomly in my pack. And, and that's sort of the whole point of doing this sort of random pop in a box thing because normally I would have never bought this pop myself but now looking at it and getting it I'm actually really happy with it and I'm surprised at how nice it looks. The only thing I sort of don't like about this pop is that this pop really requires a base. It's so top heavy with small legs that there's no way this thing is standing up without a base. It does come in the box with the pop so that's not an issue but the only thing is aesthetically when you put it on a display I find that the ones with bases always sort of can throw off the aesthetic a little bit because you do see those bases on the legs and I find it less interesting than the pops that stand on their own. So overall I find that this pop is actually very very decent and I would be giving it a very solid 7 out of 10. I mean the aesthetic is beautiful, it's very honest to the original design, the details are there. The only thing like I said that I don't appreciate is the base but other than that I would be giving this pop a like I said a very decent 7 out of 10 and if I had to pay full price for it I would not feel gypped in any way. It's a very very nice Fortnite pop. So next for the second of the two pops we have the Excavator Armor from Fallout 76. So like we did with the Tricera Ops, let's take a quick look at a close up. Now, I find that this one is a very nice pop. Like, aesthetically, this pop is incredible. The details are very precise and they, they really work. And the pop really gives you the feeling of a quality pop. By the way, normally this is one of the more expensive editions. Like, a normal pop is around 10 bucks. This one's more around 20 generally. And I would say this pop is worth it. Other than the fact that it comes out from Fallout 76, I would say that the biggest problem this pop has going for it is that it comes from a game which is really not popular and that would be the only reason I wouldn't necessarily want to be spending that extra money on. Since I'm getting this as part of my pop in a box collection, I'm not actually paying any more expensive for it than I am for any other pop that I receive, which is another big side of having that membership, like I said. However, if I was spending double the money on this pop coming from a game that is so unpopular and so, you know, hated in the general mainstream gaming media right now, I would really be, you know, disappointed in the money I had to spend to get it, but not on the aesthetic itself. So if we're just looking at it as a pop in general and aesthetic wise, I'd be giving it an 8 out of 10. Like this is a really nice pop. It's one of the nicest overall that I have in my collection if we're looking at just a purely aesthetic. However, the fact that it comes from Fallout 76, unless you're a fan of that game and there are some of you out there, I guess, uh, I would say that if we disregard the fact that, you know, the aesthetic and we're evaluated based on the game it comes from, I would actually have to knock the score down to a 6 out of 10. Why? Because spending that extra money on a pop that's from such an unpopular franchise right now uh, just would feel bad to me. But overall, if you are a fan of Fallout 76, you can take a look at that first score of 8 out of 10 
and you will not be disappointed in this pop. All the details are there, the aesthetic is beautiful, and overall, this is one of the better built pops that I've ever put my hands on. So, now that we've looked over my pops, I'll be putting them back in their boxes and into the collection, and we'll be seeing each other next month again for the next series of pops I'm gonna be getting. By the way, if any of you want to see any of my other collectibles, like I said, if you would want me to do a focus on the Dragon and Ball PVCs, if you would like me to do a focus on my retro collection, my retro consoles, my retro games, I also have a whole lot of other stuff that isn't in the studio space. It's just that, you know, I wanted something in frame for you guys that had to do with gaming. But if any of you want to see any focus on any of those other parts of my collection, just let me know in the comments down below and I'll try and pop it out as an extra video here and there. If not, well, like I said, drop a like if you want to make sure that this series keeps on going and, you know, I get the motivation to make these videos. And who knows, maybe eventually they might come on a more frequent basis, but always as an extra video on top of my regular content. Uh, at the same time, if ever you guys want to check out Pop in a Box, I'll leave the link down below to the site, but like I said, I'm not sponsored by them in any way, so it's not an affiliate link, it's just a link to the site and whatnot. As, so, as usual, thanks so much for watching, and I hope I'll catch you guys in my next video.